on the old first gen again. And I'm gonna show you guys some stuff on the bench and show you a couple things on the truck. We'll do a dyno pull and see what we get out of it. Now, I've already done the stuff because it's hard to show you guys this. I'm gonna show you on the, on the bench that there was a couple things. So, we have now, I don't know, I guess I should do a rundown of exactly what we've done, but I'll tell you what I did today for you guys that are starting at this point. So, I rotated the pump up to the cylinder head. So this gap here is what I'm talking about. I rotated the pump up to the cylinder head and I also added more fuel on the fuel screw, which is the one on the back. There again, I'll show you when we're over there. And basically what I did is I brought it up about 250 RPM and then stopped. Now, there is, you can do it different ways. I've just found that it's kind of a diminishing, well, I shouldn't say diminishing, at that point, you can go more than that, but you have to make sure you're not past the tipping point. And I don't feel comfortable showing guys that way um, because I've had them run away myself. So I always do a runaway plate when I'm doing it that way. I don't feel comfortable showing that way. If you want to try it, look it up. It's pretty simple to do, but we'll not get into that. Anyways, um, so I rotated that up and the timing up and more fuel. That is the only thing I've done to it. Well, since the last time we played with it. So at this point, uh, this is a basically stock engine other than we have an HX35 off of a second gen Dodge truck. And it does have a fuel pin in it because the one that was in there was ground. So I just changed it out. Basically exactly the same thing. And then we also have a govern spring. So nothing extravagant as far as it, as it is right now. This is an automatic truck 92, I believe it is. I think it's a 92, pretty sure it's 92. And it is intercooled, we have no boost leaks. We did have a big boost leak where you can see I've chopped at the bottom of the intercooler off there and plugged it up, just because I didn't want to screw around with that while we were doing this testing. So we're gonna fire it up. I've already had it running, bled the system and all that stuff. We're gonna fire it up, do some dyno pulls and see what we get for horsepower. And then we'll go over to the bench and do some stuff over there. I'll just show you a couple little things, what we're doing, why we're doing it. Uh, and I'll show you some tuning stuff for you guys that are interested. I've had a couple guys ask about that. And I am gonna go more in depth into that when we get Shay's truck back on the road, which you guys probably can't see. There's my first gen, it's outside, you can't see it. Uh, I wanna do some tuning and stuff on his so he can drive it. Um, and then we're also gonna do more testing on his. So I think as far as this truck is concerned, the transmission is already on borrowed time. It's angry. So I think what we're gonna do, I'm gonna throw a set of injectors at it and see if it likes that or not. If it doesn't like that, then it's gonna go outside. We'll be done with this truck. The next time you see it, we'll be turning into a burnout truck. Um, but if it likes those injectors, um, we'll do some dyno runs on those and then we'll switch over to Shay's truck because it has a built transmission in it so I don't have to worry about it slipping and all that stuff. Because that's the thing, this thing is eating up power being it's not a lockup converter. This thing is eating more is eating up power. Now, if this setup was in Shay's truck, it would make more power than it does right now. I know it would. Um, also, too, I was playing around with the dyno a little bit. The torque numbers, I think the torque numbers are low because the transmission is acting up. I think, anyway, because um, I've never had that problem. That was something I was going to ask the dyno guys. Um, but I don't. 100% no, because the numbers definitely, some runs are good and then some runs are low. Now, if it downshifts, it spikes and makes way more power uh, or maybe way more torque, but that you can't really account for that, right? Um, I'm just doing in third gear um, dyno pulls. So I'm going to set you guys up, um, get, my, get all my stuff set up, and we're doing a couple runs, see what we get on this thing. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the audio. I just got a new can a new uh, mic setup, wireless mic setup, and I'm curious if the audio is better. First, second, you can actually hear it engage in a third gear. It lays over real bad. Bleh. I don't like that. All right, we're gonna start at a thousand RPM, best I can here. Again.
pretty consistent. All right, over at the pump here, this is actually a different pump than we had out the last time. But I just wanted to show you a couple things. Now, if you wanna do your timing, uh, you wanna crank timing up, a couple tools that are really nice to have. You just need a Fisher Price tool set, as I call it, just a general tool set. Um, one of these 17 mil um, line wrenches, or line sockets, I guess, is really nice to have. This is a snap-on one. You do not have to have a snap-on one, just one that I have. And also this wrench for loosening your up your injection pump. Uh, it's a, this one's a blue point one, but it's an SP144. And then this, if you want the snap-on number off of it, is a FRXM17. If you really want the snap-on ones, I have them. I don't know. I like tools like that. Also, um, when you're doing the, um, yeah, so doing the timing, you want to have that plus regular your regular tools, plus I use a dead blow to tap the pump up. You just tap it right here. Don't Jesus beat on it, but beat on it a bit. Something else too, so you need to loosen, um, well you can see this one's actually missing a chunk. Don't do that. Um, but you need to loosen these three bolts off. And then there's also a support bolt on the back that you need to loosen. It'll be a 10 mil. The other ones are three, um, 13 mil. And these are what you need to use the line wrench for. You need to loosen those so everything will pivot a little bit easier. So you want to do that. So easy peasy as far as that goes. Fuel screw, power screw. Uh, what I recommend to do is just have a 13 mil socket on a ratchet and you can just loosen this off. Usually what I do is I actually take it right out and then knock this stupid little safety collar off. You can do it in there, but it's just as easy to pull it out. So what I do, you can see how much more this one's screwed in. This one's screwed in quite a ways um, compared to what was that one was to start with. And maybe even where it is there now. Um, but like I said, I wind it in until you gain about 250, 300 RPM from where you are. If it's never been touched, it just depends. If you're doing it, you know, I really should recommend, you should have the intake pipe off and a plate there just in case it runs away. Better safe than sorry if you're doing it. But if you go up 300, 250, 300 RPM, if you've been into the pump and nobody, you think nobody else has, pretty safe to do that. There probably is other ways to do it, I just don't know them. That's how I have always done it, and nobody's ever taught me any different. So if you guys know a different way, let me know. Um, what else did I want to talk about? All oh, the tools that you need for doing that. Um, what I do is I use uh, 13 mil. I, like I said, I pull it out, make sure everything's loose and easy to move around. If you want to, you can change that O-ring. If you bought a kit from me, uh, the, the, this kit that comes with the O-ring for here and here, it'll actually have an O-ring for that as well. Most of the time when you're in there doing that, doing a governor's spring, you're gonna do this other stuff anyway, likely. But what I like to do, if you see, this one's kind of hard because it's dirty. See how there's a little hole there? It's actually for lock wire. But what I do on it is, this is actually a trick that I got from, um, Decent garage, can't think of his name, Tim, that's it. Um, when you loosen that off, lots of times it's back here and you can't get at it, it's hard to get at. You can if you wanna take lines off, but what I've, what he did, I think he actually used a different style one. I think he used a, like a 45 degree one or whatever, which you probably could use as well. I found that the 90 degree one works though, because you can stick it in there kind of like a screwdriver, like that, in the hole or in the slot, and then you get it turned, the hole for the, the other, for the lock wire is 90 degrees from that. So you can actually just stick your pin, your end of it in there and turn it. And it's not that hard to turn as long as you're not up against your, your um, jigger, your jam nut, that's the word. So you can wind it in there like that. Um, oh no, sorry, wrong one. So when you get that loosened off, what you can do is you can just grab a socket, which is a six mil, and you can just wind this in on a ratchet until you get your desired RPM. Now, your RPM is gonna be too high now. So lock that all down, and then your next step, what you wanna do is you need to loosen this rod off, which is on the inside, your cylinder head is here. You need to wind this back. Now, this is your, is your idle 
idle circuit, I'm gonna call it, for lack of a better option. Idle stop, I guess. What you need to do is you need to loosen this nut off. Now, what I found the easiest, I made this wrench, it's just a cheap wrench, I don't even know. It's a Maple Leaf brand, made in Canada. <laughs> Funny enough. Um, but I just bent it, not quite 90 degrees, but awful close. And what you can do is you can put it in there like this. This is the front of the engine. And then you can crack it loose. And usually what I do is I just put a pair of vice grips on it here. Just put a pair of vice grips on it and you can loosen it off. Now, when you do that, what you can do is take a pick, because this is actually relatively hard to get at. This is actually uh, Tim at Decent Garage. Um, he uses a, a 45 degree one. I found that the ones that are straight are better. Myself, just a solid 90 degree. But what you can do is you can use that for turning it because it's hard to get at. And then your, so your slot is there and then 90 degrees from your slot is a hole. So you can turn it back, you know, in between. It's way easier than having to take everything apart, in my opinion. But that is what we did today. Um, we'll go over there, see the dyno runs, and then I'll come back to you at that point and we'll talk a little bit about tuning, a couple things you can do in there, uh, stuff that I would recommend doing right off the hop. Um, you know, all this stuff is stuff that I would do uh, right away if it was me. So, all right, uh, we'll see you when we get back from that. <clears throat> all right, so we got that, that all figured out. So with, as it's sitting right now, here's the dyno sheet from today. Um, we're up 12 horsepower from the last video. Now I did kind of get the, the horsepower torque thing figured out. I would say that's actually relatively reasonable um, torque wise. Um, I think I got a setting and I think I'm just gonna use that setting from now on for all of the videos um, with this, this uh, power type power level anyway. So we're like 230 horsepower um, and it seems to run good. It's not real hot. I think it was like mid 600s. Um, which is, I don't know what it is in the conversion. I'll do the conversion up here. Um, but it's, that's Fahrenheit, not Celsius or vice versa. No, that's Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Um, I wish I could, ha I wish I could do the two. The problem is if I put it in PSI, then it gives me Fahrenheit. No, it gives me Celsius. And then if I switch it the other way, it gives me other way. So it no matter which way I look at, I'm screwed, but you're over there. Uh, I just have to do the conversions. So uh, truck is running good, no problems. Transmission seems to be working okay. It's still a lot, it's, it is lazy into third gear, but is what it is. So I think on the next step of where we are now, um, I'm going to, we'll do a video. We'll change the injectors that are in that truck, which has stock injectors in it. Uh, from what I know anyway, they look like they've never been changed. We're gonna pull those injectors out and put a set of my stage ones in and we'll crank it up and see what it gets. Um, I think, Ah, uh, we might do that too. I want to try a set of delivery valves from Ratman Performance in it. I don't know if I'll do it in this or will we do it in Shay's. Maybe we'll do it in Shay's truck. This one's kind of a pain because it has an inner fender in a way and changing the back and forth kind of sucks. Yeah, so we'll do, we're going to do a set of stage ones in this truck and see what it gives us for power. I would imagine that's probably all the tranny's going to hold. Like I said, third gear is getting lazy. So we'll... Swap out a set of stage ones into this thing. Also too, for you guys, um, I'm gonna swap a set of stage ones into this. We're gonna do some testing. Shay's truck has stage ones in it now. Um, I'm gonna put these ones for sale when we're done doing the testing at a discount. So if you guys are looking at uh, a set of my injectors, a uh, set of stage ones, and you're okay with having a few dyno pulls on them, I will test them, make sure everything is kosher, clean them, test them. Like I'll pull them apart, clean them, retest them. Uh, make sure everything's good, uh, but they will have some dyno pulls. If you're interested, um, I'm gonna have a spot in the store for um, used parts, I guess. Or probably used parts. Yeah, probably used parts. Um, but I'll let you know when they're in there as well, if you guys are interested. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. Uh, I do post stuff, post more stuff on there, day-to-day -day stuff. If you're interested, it's just Cutter Up Rob on Instagram. All right, um, check out this video now that you're done this one.